But tell us why this deal came together, how quickly it came together, and how do you address the concerns that people have that, look, this is just another spec, and we're not sure when this company is actually going to pay off for us? Yeah, well, it, it's an incredibly exciting day for us as a company, and, and I think for this technology moving forward. For the last four and a half years, we've really been investing in building the foundations of what it takes to ship a, a product in this space. Um, I've known Reed and the reInvent team for a long time. Uh, they've, you know, they're kind of deeply experienced with what we're doing. And as we look to expand uh, Aurora's access to capital so that we can actually go and deliver on this mission, uh, uh, tapping the public market seemed like the right path for us. It allowed public market investors to be part of the journey in, uh, in this space. Uh, so we're just incredibly excited about, uh, about where we are today. The valuation of this deal at about $11 billion. Now, your roadmap calls for you to deliver your first level four autonomous driving system uh, to either Volvo or Packard or both of them by late 2023 uh, so they can put these into their trucks. Um, how confident are you that we will actually see level four autonomous driving on the streets and on highways late 23, early 24? Yeah, so so this is part of what we have with Aurora is this deep experience in the team and just this incredible group of about 1,600 people working on the problem. And so, uh, uh, you know, we feel uniquely qualified to, to understand how to get there and what it's going to take. We've been investing in foundational technologies, whether it's our LiDAR technology, first light that allows us to see several hundred meters down the road, or whether it's our offline simulation capability that allows us to develop dramatically more efficiently and more safely, and, and importantly, give us enough data to be able to ultimately validate the system and have confidence that it's safe to put on the road. And so, you know, we can't see the future, of course, but we're, we're committed and working hard towards that date. Good morning, Chris, it's Deirdre. Um Last year, you guys purchased Uber's self-driving unit. And for Uber, it was, you know, a major money loser. It lost about $300 million at least last year. Have you been able to improve margins? And when do you expect autonomous driving to become profitable on a gross profit basis? Well, for us, that, that partnership was really, or that acquisition was really about bringing the talent that was necessary to solve the problem together, along with incredible technology and partnerships. And so out of that deal, we're now partnered with the world's number one ride hailing platform with Uber, uh, the world's number one uh, auto manufacturer with Toyota, and with two of the top three truck manufacturers in North America that make up about 50% of the market. So we're spring loaded to, to enter the market with what we think are the best partnerships in the industry. The team that we're able to bring in from, from Uber to augment the, the, the amazing folks we had at, at Aurora really puts us at the critical mass necessary to actually solve the problem. We expect to be getting a product to market, as we said, at the end of 23. And then because our business model is one of a, what we call a driver as a service type model, where we get paid for the utilization of our driver and market, think of it like a usage-based uh, SaaS model. We think that this becomes a really exciting business quickly and we'll you know, not only do amazing things for, for society in terms of improving road safety, access, eligibility, uh, uh, equitable, uh, equitable access and uh, reducing the cost of it, but will also increase, uh, create an immense amount of value for our shareholders over time. How do you think about competition with Alphabet's Waymo? Some have argued that it could actually become the leader in terms of robo-taxis, combining its uh, ride-sharing network due to its huge amounts of data, and it's also seen as a leader in autonomous driving technology. Yeah, and, and we have a ton of respect for everyone working in this space. This is an important problem that matters to solve, and the space is gigantic, right? That it's, you know, some transportation in the U.S. is something like a $1.8 trillion market. And so there's room for multiple players, and, and as there should be in a market of that scale. Uh, that said, as I think about Aurora, um, when I look at the, the landscape, I think about the people, the technology, the partnerships and the go-to-market strategy. And so with Aurora, the size of the team, the experience of the team puts us in, uh, you know, in, in a rare, rarefied area. I think there's only two or three teams that are at the scale that we are. Uh, in terms of the technology, that deep experience we have has allowed us to make strategic bets that will actually unlock the technology at a commercial scale, not just as a demonstration. Uh, our partnerships, as I just talked about, are really profoundly valuable and important. And, and we see the opportunity to help raise their businesses and thus scale ours over time. And then finally, I think this is important, as a public market investor, we're going to be the only company that you can directly invest in where we're tackling both the trucking problem, that massive market, but also the ride-hailing partnership. 
and through our, our engagement with a ride hailing application, through our partnership with Uber, we'll be able to deliver a product in the market that starts to serve people before it has to do everything. And we think getting into market hey, is really important here. 